What's up, viewers, subscribers, and agents alike? It's your boy, Light Mr. Fair and Prince, coming at y'all once again. Um, been a little busy the past couple days, but I just decided to do an upload. I didn't want to do an upload on this particular subject because I know it's somewhat internet controversial as of the moment, but I think I need to do a video on this to get give more clarity on the situation. And if you're watching this video around children, please remove them from your immediate vicinity. Okay. For people who have been following social media lately, I know that people have heard that um, there was a motivational speaker by the name of Kevin Samuels who passed away. Um, I believe it was on May 5th of this month, this 2022, man was 56 years old. Now, before people think I'm taking sides, I'm not. I'm just explaining. This is just a discourse. But no, never really listened to the guy, except for just in snippets on maybe like TikTok or something, or, or pretty much just TikTok, really. But he was a motivational speaker and like a relationship coach, I should say of sorts, but the one thing that happened is he passed away from cardiac arrest um, on, the, on the 5th, but he was supposedly had met a woman, yada, 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 next day he, he wound up, passed away, but the thing I want to get at in this video is the art of division. Now, the reason why I want to get at the art of division is because there are a lot of people, you know, men and women alike, who are actually glad that this man passed away. Now, I've done and said a lot of things in my life, but I'll tell you what, even to a guy like me, that's pretty cold. And first off, to disrespect anybody's passing, you don't realize that you actually can, you know, manifest curses on your own existence for whatever reason, you know, and it's not, you know, life and death's in the power of the tongue and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So there's a lot of people going back and forth about who he was, you know, to me, I mean, he's a motivational speaker, life coach, but above all else, the man was human. Like we all are. OK, and it's a lot of back and forth going between the uh, melanated community because it's always been this eternal war between either gender specifics, male, female or the color specifics, particularly what people refer to as black or whatever, which is understandable because you have to realize that that was a narrative that was actually manufactured and driven into our community by the opposition. And a lot of people don't even realize that they're even walking around with this particular disease. See, when you go back into history, if you go back to the Willie Lynch letter of 1714, and you read it very closely, it said particularly if you implement the division between the man and the woman, the light versus the dark, old against the young, you'll be able to control a particular people, a diaspora people, mainly what they consider the indigenous, which turned into Negro, you'll be able to control them for a thousand years. Now, I, think, I don't think a lot of people have really read that letter. If they haven't, they need to read it. But it's so sad because to be so fragile, to let the architects of chaos divide the family unit between the melanated man and melanated woman, that's a race of people who are headed really for extinction. Everybody has preferences, and I think that a lot of things have been manufactured because just like in the 60s into the 70s, when there were strong family units, you have to realize that when there were strong family units, they was like, okay, we're going to, the government implemented policies to basically take the father figure out the house 
and allow the woman figure to actually live off of so it's subsidized housing and or government assistance in some way, which is basically what they consider like welfare checks and basically getting a stipend from the government. So you take the provider out the house, which is particularly the head of the household, and basically you let the woman fend for herself. You know, now people don't understand that even though this happened like about, let's say a better, better part of 60 years ago, it's still alive and well today. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't get. The only thing that exists now as a greater tool of division is access for everybody to get up on social media and stand on the proverbial soapbox and voice their opinion about things that they don't know have historically been implemented to keep you further divided. If you keep a people divided, then there is no hope for the success and the longevity of that particular race of people. That's a fact. If people don't understand the mechanisms that are being used, it is social engineering to cause division. Now it's getting to the point where so many people in this world are bitter and broken. Not because of implemented policies that were created from a particular community of people, but you have to look at the synergy of where this stuff comes from. See, most of this stuff starts in education, and it starts in early childhood education. And it all starts with the family unit. A lot of people are adults and are still hanging on to bitterness and things that happened to them while they were children. It's a fact, you know? And to walk around like that in life, well, it's really not a healthy state of mind. But if you're that mentally weak, then that's what allows these, these division policies to work because they can only affect you if indeed you succumb to that mentality. If you are not a part of that mentality or you're not a part of that particular agenda and you love your own, then guess what? Particularly, th those plans don't work anymore. And that's a very significant truth in less than eight minutes. But the thing that really disgusts me is the fact that people are actually happy that somebody passed away. <laughs> Damn, how dark how dark has the world become? <laughs> you had to be real dark to do that. <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> but like I told people, it's all a part of a plan to keep the man and the woman of the melanated diaspora separate. Straight. It's social engineering. They've been working on it for years. Seems like it's working on the weak minded anyway. <laughs> Seems like it's working. The world grows colder every day. But I tell you what, love cures a multitude of sins. Straight up. And I'm telling you, no other diaspora people in this world over has been more attacked on the intimacy level the melanated people, especially in a westernized society. Straight up. But I'm going to leave off on this note. And I believe I told somebody this a little bit earlier. Maury Povich, you know, the Maury show, has a net worth of $100 million dollars off of the exploitation of a particular diaspora people, of a black people, making them look hypersexualized and making them look like serial, sexually hyperactive. But you know what he's doing? He's probably sitting down at lunch right now with his wife. A man who made $100 million over the course of his career. Making the counterpart, male and female in the African American community, look like they're irresponsible. 
for decades. <laughs> With this cancel culture, how come he ain't been canceled? Let that sink in. This man made a fortune off of your misfortune. Not you particularly, but as a monolith, looks pretty irresponsible. He don't care. Every time you're on that show, he got a smile on his face. But nobody says nothing about that. Nobody says anything about that. But once it comes to people who make you accountable, it's offensive to be accountable in today's weak-ass culture. And that's the reason why a lot of people are happy that it took place, because they ain't got no backbone. It's spineless. Spineless. With only a spineless, excuse me, piece of shit would be glad that somebody's passing. And I said what I said. Peace, light, love. Asian, fuck you. Y'all stay tuned for my next upload. Y'all stay tuned. Stay aware. Stay awakened. I'm letting Rocket to sleep. You enjoy. Peace.